before we can begin, I need to indulge myself in a bit of nostalgia. For you see, it was the heady days of 2012, and I attended my first YCON doing media for Rebel Empire workshops. We were waiting around in the big theatre when I got to see some weird guy in a purple jacket doing rehearsals for a later performance. <laughs> And he was one of the funniest people I'd ever seen. That man is John Robertson. Later that night, he performed his stand-up show Dragon Punch to the Wicon audience. And naturally, I only found out about it the next day. My friends were telling me about this hilarious joke involving text-based adventures and the evil and omnipresent force that blocked you at every opportunity. As a fan of such games, I was kicking myself that I missed it. And then something weird and wonderful happened on YouTube. You awake to find yourself in a dark room. There are numerous ways to describe the original YouTube videos. Funny, frustrating, avant-garde, insane, nightmarish, causes homicidal Germans, but I also thought they were brilliant. Whilst it could be argued it's basically one step above a special features game on a DVD, the scope of Robertson's creation is truly inspired. But Mr. Robertson didn't stop there. He added more content, created more levels, and even adding clever ways of navigating that extended it beyond the confines of YouTube's interface. And then he turned it back into a stage show, and it somehow got even better, making for one of the most entertaining crowd participation shows that doesn't involve throwing spoons at a screen. You awake to find yourself in a dark room. The format worked brilliantly, and somehow this maniac not only kept him consistent during play, but made it even funnier. Especially when now the additions of Darren. And then the world famous Democracy Round, in which everyone plays. And the wonderful thing about democracy is that the people with the loudest voices, the people who always get what they want. Prizes were often things from his house or an op shop. Why? Some Christmas jelly beans! <laughs> From four years ago. A partially used tin of Keen's mustard. An actual machete, that seems weird. I think I still have a packet of noodles in a jacket somewhere. I even helped with the making of the 2012 tour promo. Hi, I'm John Roberts. Nobody cares! I'm a floating head. Well, I drove John to the recording and helped with the lighting and then my car started to break down halfway through the drive. It got better. I'm sorry about that, John. John's hair eventually got longer and whiter as he evolved along with the show, as well as adding some Mad Max chic, and they both never stopped being brilliant. Yeah. Shut up, Darren! <laughs> Darren, you weak to find yourself in a dark room! The YouTube version changed along with it, and with at least one full reboot two years ago to fit the newer show. This is a long about way of saying that I am biased as fuck on this review, <laughs> and I just don't care. The Dark Room has finally come full circle with an actual video game release on Steam Early Access. The game itself is published and developed by Stir Fire Studios, a West Australian based gaming developer. Robertson himself is naturally writing and providing the voice of the sadistic overseer as he deliciously narrates all the trials and tribulations as you attempt to escape the dark room. You're just some sort of brickwork slut, aren't you, Darren? Now the walls have lost all respect for you. How did they have respect to lose their walls? So as the game begins, you're given the morality test. There's a tiny butterfly in front of you. It's beautiful. Grabbing it will kill it, but it will be yours. Then you must choose your name. <laughs> really? Dolores? Oh, is it 1958 already? Who's got the vote? I do hope the Ruskies don't beat us to the moon. Which doesn't really matter because she'll end up being Darren anyway. And anyway, Dolores is just fancy talk for Darren. And then finally, you weak to find yourself in a yeah, 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 we get it. As stated, the gameplay is simple enough. 
You have up to four choices, which can be selected in any numerous ways, including the Xbox controller. This is what happens when you try and replace your heart and you don't have Tony Stark's budget. <laughs> Simply put, if you choose poorly, you die, you die, you die, you die. But thankfully, you can just restart from the checkpoint. This is handy because like most choose your own adventures, you might be several turns into a path before being railroaded into an unavoidable demise and restarting from scratch can be a nightmare of recollections. This also improves the navigation from the YouTube days when you had to try and backtrack to get to a point to continue in a different direction. Like that really matters? You die, you die, you die, you die. Would you like to play again? This could deter any hardcore gamers, but it just makes it easier to explore the game and allows you to keep going mostly unhindered. All that being said, it's a much better experience than having to navigate the YouTube window, with a much better loading time than anything connected to the Australian internet with its new and improved copper network. There really isn't too much more to say without giving away major spoilers. Basically, the more I show you, the more that gets revealed, and this game is worth exploring. Long-time fans will know what to do, or more specifically what not to do in certain circumstances, but it's changed up enough to make you want to keep going. The game is in early access and therefore you need to be ready for potential bugs, glitches and crashes. At this time, only level one is complete, but it is still being patched and updated. Hopefully with more sales, the developers can add more levels and expand the experience. It also seems at this point, only a fraction of the original 2012 version is available having been mostly superseded by the 2016 revision, which is still full of the fun and crazy of the dark room. That being said, this is the best version you can play, at least until John arrives at your front door for a live gig. It is fast and fun and bloody hilarious. And whilst it can be challenging to keep track of things, uh, especially between games, there is more than enough to keep going and enjoy the experience. So go to Steam and buy this shit already. I mean, odds are you know John Robertson more than me, so why aren't you supporting him already? <laughs> oh my.